feet to your right. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. um, you've got expectations. How, I mean, serious, hardcore expectations. How do you navigate that? Have you talked to your team about the situation that they find themselves in? Well, I've always felt, first of all, how is everybody doing today? Good. I've always felt as a coach, every season that I've gone in as a head coach, expe expectations are always high, no matter what. And I think that's a good thing. Um, we can't run from it. It's what it is. You know, I think our schedule that we've scheduled this year has put us somewhat in that light in terms of competition, really stiff competition. And then you got to deal with the Big Ten, which is stiff every year. So expectations are always going to be high. When I came in here and took the job, expectations were high. This program is built that way, and it should be that way. So it's what it is, man. I'm not going to run from it. and. And I'm not going to let my players run from it. You know, there's a lot of big things that's got to happen this year for our ball club. And I'm going to try to coach them up and push them in that direction. Uh, August, early in the offseason, I'm oh, sorry, it's a lot, but uh, Xavier Johnson was arrested and went through that legal process with the reckless driving. I guess, is he, was he punished in any way? Is he going to be punished in terms of suspension or anything like that? What kind of, I guess, internal... Um, uh, I guess, um, what he had to go through internally because of that? Well, that's all behind us. I mean, he's gotten through that process. Um, he would have to do some community service. Um, X has grown a lot, you know, based on the things that he's done this summer. He's put himself in a wonderful position with me being the coach. And I like everything about what X is doing now because he is doing the right things and he's on and off the court. And, you know, he doesn't have a vehicle anymore. I took that away from him. So if that's punishment, it's punishment. And I don't mean that in a, a negative way. You know, we're just trying to do the things that necessary to help us win basketball games and I think he's made a major step in that direction to help us. I guess following on with right here in the front row, um, following on with X the way he finished last season and, and then maybe having to have some hard conversations with him around that incident around that arrest. How have you pushed him this summer to be more consistent, to take his level up in terms of, I think he finished last season averaging like 18 points and about six of them assists a game. How have you basically just sort of demanded more of him, I guess, in year two as your point guard? Well, when you look at what happened to X, where we started with X and where he ended up, X probably caught more hell on this team than anybody from his head coach. And there's a reason why because I think when you're building a basketball team, you expect a lot out of all of your players, but that position is a pivotal position in terms of how you play on both ends of the floor. And X hung in there with me. You know, he fought me at times, but it worked out well for him at the end and for our ball club. And watching him go through his summer work because he did taste some success. It's the first time he had experienced being in the big dance. He really, I mean, he just came in with a totally different attitude, which is kind of nice to see. It means to me he's growing up. And it has displayed nicely on the basketball court because out of all the summer play that I've watched and been a part this summer, he's probably been the brightest of them all. Again, I want to remind you to introduce yourself and your affiliation before you uh, ask your question. 
Hey, Coach, uh, Kyle with Sports Report Media. Hi, Cal. Um, question for you, positive question. You were on the NBA circuit for a long time. What did you learn about yourself last year on the college circuit? It had been a while since you've done that, obviously, but what did you learn and you know, maybe some fun things you did on the circuit last year for the college games? Well, the one thing that I've learned, um, you know, being in the NBA all those years and, and coaching, you know, there's really not enough time to prepare and teach and really be a part of a player's life because, you know, you got three, four games coming at you a week in the NBA. It's just not enough time in the day. And that's the frustrating part about the NBA. But it was a beautiful run for me. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that in a negative way. The NBA was great for me. But coming back home to coach college basketball here in Indiana, you know, I've been able to really be around the, the players uh, and, and really be, I'm able to coach, you know, I mean, I'm able to prepare and, and, and teach, you know, on the basketball for things that I like to do. And, and then when you see the results, you know, we had our ups and downs last year, but I thought our ups outweighed our downs. We played a lot of positive basketball. We were in a lot of basketball games. Uh, it's just going to be up to me to get them over the hump, you know, and get them to the next level because that's what it's all about. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Abjohns. Jeffrey Abjohns, Beans.com. How you doing, Coach? Good. How you doing? All right. Obviously, three-point shooting is something that's been on the minds of IU fans for a long time. Do you guys need more three-point attempts to increase productivity from the line? And who are two or three players you feel are most in line to help you from three-point percentage and three-point production? Well, that was a big problem last year. Uh, I mean, we, you know, you guys witnessed as, as, you know, the media outlet and our fans too. But, uh, I, you know, I thought we got a lot of good looks. Uh, you know, we were in the top college about being the top five in college basketball in terms of open threes that we just didn't knock down and you know I like to think you know Miller having a taste of what Indiana basketball is all about now and you know I think he'll be a lot better this season Xavier showed that he can make them uh, I think some of the freshmen that we're bringing in will be able to knock some of those down. Uh, Race kind of picked it up, you know, from previous years. The guy who really wasn't allowed to shoot him, uh, he made some for us last year. So I think we'll be okay in that regard uh, this year. Uh, it's not like not like we're not working on threes. We shoot them every day. Uh, we shoot free throws every day. It's just when you get to game situation, you got to feel comfortable and, and ready to knock them down. And that's my job to, to, to relax them and get them in that position. Mike Schumann, raise your hand. Hey, Coach. Mike Schumann with the Daily User. You guys announced an NBA Pro Day here in a couple of weeks. I'm curious what kind of the genesis of that was and what you're hoping to get out of it. Well, I think, you know, when you got high expectations and you got a few players that might have a crack at playing at the next level, it's okay to invite the NBA world into your life. You know, I'm not afraid of that and I don't think it put any added pressure on our players. Uh, I think they are excited about it really, you know, to be able to let the NBA world come in and watch practice and see who's doing what. Um, hell, it might enhance them to, to play harder and better. It's kind of how I look at it. So I'm looking forward to it. It's something I, that's never been done here, I don't think. And uh, you know, I gotta keep my ties with the NBA world anyway. I mean, I got a lot of friends that, at the big level. So it'd be nice to have them come in and watch what we do. Tyler Tackman. Hey, Coach Tyler Tashman with the Indy Star. 
Um, I was curious, kind of going off the expectations um, part of it, when you were a player at Indiana, um, I think you guys a few times were ranked in the top 10 uh, preseason. Um, when you were a player, did you embrace kind of the expectations, I guess the external expectations, or were you someone that said, you know, it doesn't matter where we, you know, where we are in, in the AP poll, we're, I'm going to do the same exact thing. How did you kind of approach that as a, as a player? Well, again, the rankings is a part of college basketball, all sports in college, and you can't get from under that hill. My senior year, we were ranked number one in the nation. It didn't work out that well for me. You know, I mean, we didn't, we didn't win the national title. Rankings are what they are. You know, you still got to play the game, my man. You know, that's, that's what's important, what happens between these two lines. And, you know, it's going to be my job to get this team to play at a level every night and put them in position to win every time they step out on the floor. That's what it's all about to me. Rankings are what they are. You know, I don't know what we're ranked this year. I know somebody told me we, we're ranked in the top 20. That's great, but you still got to play the game. So that's how I approached it as a player. Um, you know, I think some players, you know, it's nice to see because it's something these, some of these guys hadn't been ranked since they've been here. Um, but they are now, so let's go play the games and see what happens. Yeah. Hi, Mike, right here. Rick Bozich from WDRB in Louisville. Um, this is the first time that you guys have done Media Day, men and women together. Your team is preseason going to be ranked, but so is Terry's. What impresses you most about Terry and, and her program? She's a hell of a coach. All you got to do is look at the results and how her team has responded to her body of work on the floor. You know, she's. You know, watching her team, her team is a beautiful team to watch because they do all the necessary things to win basketball games. And that's a sign of Terry and, 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 the, and the work that she's put in. So, you know, I'm not surprised that, you know, they're, they're ranked. They deserve to be ranked. Hell, they led the Big Ten sometime last year, you know, at the top. And, you know, I expect that they'll be there again this year, you know. So I'm wishing them nothing but the best. Hey Mike, Alex Bozich over here to your right inside the hall. I'm just curious with uh, Trace, you know, last season he talked about maybe expanding his game to the perimeter. We didn't actually see him take, I think he took three three-pointers last season. Do you see him stepping out to the perimeter, taking the three-pointer more this season, or is that something It's kind of, I know there was, you encouraged him to do it, maybe he didn't feel comfortable, but do you see that as part of his game moving forward this year? Well, again, I'm not going to stop him from doing that. He'll get, he'll be in a position where he catches it out there to, and have an opportunity to, to shoot it. If he shoots it, fine. Um, you know, everybody looks at this thing where he's got to be a three-point shooter. I think if he makes a 15 to 17 foot shot, it's just as effective. It's kind of how I look at it. And he's going to be in position to shoot those shots, like the little elbow and the free throw shots. And it's okay for him to shoot it. And I think, you know, this summer, the work that he's put in, you know, he's shown that he can make that shot. And he has made them, you know, in our little pickup games and things of that nature. He's just got to carry it over to the real game when it, when it's, when it counts. You know, I mean, I thought one of the biggest shots – of the season was in the Big Ten tournament against Illinois, where he faced up Kofi and he he shot a jump shot. Well, he's going to have to do that some more, you know, this season. Coach is not telling him not to put it that way. Hi, Coach Jim Coyle with Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Your second season now coming in, uh, you've got your first one out of the way. And what have you learned as a coach, having all those years spent in the NBA as a coach, plenty of experience, but the college game a little different and different than when you played. What are some of the things that you learned as a coach and that you learned about how to run a program after that first season? I got to get better. You know, I, I always put pressure on myself. I don't put it on the player. You know, yeah, the player has to play, but 
I got to get better in, in finishing games because I thought there were a number of games I left out there last season in terms of we controlled games. I mean, I look at the Iowa game coming down the stretch, four and a half minutes and we up nine and we can't close that game out. You know, for me, that's, that's tough to swallow as a coach. And so those are things that I got to go back to the drawing board and work on to the point when I'm, when I'm in that position, I get them over the hump. And, and we come, in, I come out of that game feeling good about ourselves. But uh, I don't know, coaching is coaching, Jim. I, you know, there are a lot of things that come into play, you know, when you're coaching. And, you know, when I look at the college game and, and how it's being played, a lot of pick and rolls, uh, a lot of three-point shots, the teams that sit at the top really get after you defensively. Uh, you know, I think we got to be able to do all those things to be able to compete at a high level and and beat, you know, the big time teams. You know, I mean, that's what it's going to take this season because that's that's pretty much how the college game is being played. Zach, and then you'll pass it to uh, Jeff. Zach Osterman, Indianapolis Star here in the front row uh, on your right. Um, going back to Trace, he has seemed sort of willing to, to talk openly about, I guess, being more introspective, being a leader, his legacy, things like that. As he comes back for a fourth year and, and I think the expectations that even he'll sort of acknowledge, I mean, does he vocalize that with you uh, as his coach and as someone who's, who's walked that journey before being expected in this place to be? you know, kind of a key figure for a really good team with a, a lot of attention and a lot of expectations. Does he talk about that with you at all? We talk. Uh, he know expectations are high this year. You know, and the fact that he made the commitment to come back is huge for our program. I mean, it's like the piece to the program. Uh, I think the body of work that Trace has put in over the three years that he's played here has been unbelievable but he's still got a lot of work on, on the table that he's got a, he's got a lot of things he's got to finish you know you talk about legacy legacy is putting another big 10 title in here legacy is putting another national title that's what it's all about i think that's what he's thinking about more than anything uh, and as far as his leadership he's making strides in that area uh to help lead because that's that's what's going to be expected of him. Um, you know, I'm not going to let him run from it. Um, he's got to be our leader. He's got to push guys around him and hold guys accountable. And he's got to step up and be a, be the guy. I mean, that's that's what it's going to take for us to reach those two goals. Good afternoon, Coach. Thanks for being here, Skip Daly with the South. Skip Daly with the South Central Indiana News Network. You've talked about legacy. You've talked about expectations. How would you define success for uh, basketball season 22-23? Again, I don't look at it in that light. My thing is I take a season one game at a time, one practice at a time. Um, yes, we got goals. I've only... <laughs> I can't say this loud enough, guys. I came back here to win Big Ten titles and a national title. That's all I want. And I'm not going to push the team in any other direction. Uh, if they're scared of that challenge, then they shouldn't be here. It's kind of how I look at it. Uh, I'm not scared of it. You shouldn't be scared of it. You know, we, <laughs> we got to do this together as a unit. Uh, and again, I know expectations are high. I get that, and that's a good thing. But we got to go out and do it on the floor and show that we can do or win a Big Ten title, and a national title. That's all I. That's that's all I'm concerned about right now. And the only way to do that is get better each and every day in practice, and when we step on the floor, that we're playing at a high level. Hey, Coach. Jeff Rab, Johns, Pigs.com again. I saw a lot of great stuff from Jalen Hood, Shafino, and Montverde in AAU. I've heard great stuff from NBA scouts about him. I'm curious, what do you think he is best 
suited to do for you guys this year? And what kind of an impact can he have as a 6'5", bigger guard who has a big arsenal? Well, again, I don't put pressure on none of these freshmen. Um, but on the flip side of that, I got to speed the process up. They can't play like freshmen. You know, I'm going to need those guys to be a big part of what we do. And, you know, I always have told players, you know, you can't play everybody 30 minutes a game. It's the minutes that you get that you got to make the most of. And if it's two minutes a game, it better be the, the best two minutes that you make you play out on the floor for us because if you don't, I might not come back that way. So, you know, everybody's got to be ready to play. Safino has been a great addition to our ball club because he can do a lot of things on the basketball floor. But he's got to be held accountable to play at a high level and help us win basketball games. I'm going to need him to do that. Time for two or three more questions. Uh, Haley in the back, gentleman in the orange, go ahead. No, you go in the orange, yeah. Hi, Coach Mason Williams, thehoosier.com. I'm curious about your schedule this year, especially the non-conference. You guys have already got a pretty stacked gauntlet in the Big Ten, but what are you expecting out of the team going into those non-conference matchups? To win. That's, you know, that's the only thing I'm expecting. As um, soon as we... We start here with Marion and the practice game. That's when it starts to me. Whenever there's officials and we throw that ball up, I expect us to win. Um, yeah, we got some stiff competition this year with you know Xavier and Carolina and Kansas and Arizona. Hey, it's what it is, man. You know, hey, we just got to be ready to play and compete uh, and win. You know, I mean, I'm not pushing anything else. We cannot run from the schedule. The schedule is what it is. Hi, Coach. In the back over here, Haley Jordan, Sports Illustrated, Indiana. Uh, let's circling back to your freshman. You already mentioned Jalen, but how have your other freshmen been developing and working in this off season in order to immerse themselves into a good team? Well, they've had their ups and downs. You know, they've gotten a whiff of who I'm about a little bit. Um, but the beauty about the four freshmen that we brought in, they're very, very competitive. And that's a big part of growing as an individual player. Because if they were not competitive, boy, I would be very, very disappointed. But they are competitive. They don't like to lose. Uh, you know, I shared this story with you when we first started. They couldn't beat the first unit you know, that I had out on the floor. They would go go home with their heads hung and down and disappointed. And I called them in after one practice and I said, listen, there's gonna come a time where you're gonna beat that unit. Well, it's been kind of back and forth ever since those first two weeks. So they've been very, very competitive. They're trying to do all the necessary things on and off the court in terms of school, and which is, is first and foremost, uh, but I like I like how they're they're competing, and that's that's what made coaching fun for me. Tyler, last question. Coach Tyler Tashman with the Indy Star. Um, you mentioned Miller Cop before. Um, what's just your favorite part about coaching him? Well, he's very coachable. Uh, in in the big league, we call him a, a true pro because he listens and he, he tries to do all the things that's asked of him. Um, and I think he's trying to be more of a leader. I mean, Miller's been around a while too, uh, and I'm gonna need him to lead and, and hold guys accountable as well as himself. Uh, but I like everything about Miller. You know, I just gotta get him making some shots for us. And, you know, I thought his defense last year was phenomenal. You know, I mean, from where he started, People thought he couldn't really defend. He was one of our best perimeter defenders last year, which was kind of nice to see. All right, Coach, thank you much.